A very warm welcome back to the channel and a huge thank you for watching. So it's made its way into a few news outlets, although I haven't seen the documents myself, which I usually like to, but nonetheless it's made its way into a few news outlets that Amber Heard has finally admitted defeat and filed for bankruptcy. This gives rise to many questions that you might ask, such as what happens to the judgment? What if she can't pay the judgment? Can she get off the judgment? And then again, what about the appeal? Because she had to pay the bond to the judgment amount with interest. What about that? So make sure you stick around till the end of the video. So there's a few things going on here. First of all, let's just give an overview of what bankruptcy is supposed to be. Bankruptcy, there are certain thresholds, for example, in England and Wales, because that's where I'm based. There is what we call a bankruptcy threshold, which obviously means there's a minimum amount that you must owe to various creditors before you can actually declare bankruptcy. In England and Wales currently, that is £5,000 for an individual. So only £5,000 and above, and you can either be made bankrupt or self-declare bankruptcy. And then there's a whole process of going through all of your assets in your name, anything that you're entitled to and so on. And this will generally take any of your assets and try to distribute them among your creditors in a certain hierarchical order. For example, if you have a property against which there is a charge, a first charge, that means the lender has secured their money against your property. They are normally first in line for this money when your property gets sold. However, there are certain things that you cannot discharge and that goes for England and Wales and it goes for the United States. So I've taken the liberty of looking up some of these codes and I'm going to address them in this video. First of all, some generic things, for example, in England and Wales, you cannot get out of paying child maintenance payments by declaring bankruptcy. That simply doesn't work. If you haven't paid child maintenance payments for a certain amount of time, you cannot just get out of this debt by declaring bankruptcy. And you certainly can't get out of the ongoing liability to continue to pay those payments by declaring bankruptcy. Likewise, and to answer one of the questions, can Amber Heard get out of paying this judgment to Johnny Depp? My analysis starts with the bankruptcy law in the United States in which there is a section 523 which sets out various exceptions to discharge. And so in a nutshell, what this means is that the various types of debt that have been accrued cannot be discharged or written off and waived away by declaring bankruptcy. Many of these things include obtaining money, property or services under false pretenses or false representations or actual fraud. Logically, you would assume, and I often say that the law should follow common sense, you would assume that you cannot benefit from a fraud and then wipe off the debt with a bankruptcy. So this is one of the exceptions under this code. Similarly, if you hold a fiduciary duty, that's where you must act in the interests of a beneficiary for a trust, so you cannot use any of that money for self gain. It must be for the gain of somebody else, the beneficiary under that trust or whatever the system might be. If you hold this fiduciary duty and you are responsible for some kind of fraud or embezzlement or some other kind of larceny, clearly you should not be able to, and indeed you cannot escape this liability for these funds by declaring bankruptcy. But importantly, in respect of this Amber Heard trial, the important section under this code is section 523 sub 6, which provides that there is an exception for willful and malicious injury by the debtor to another entity or the property of another entity. So this is ultimately the problem that she's going to have here. She's going to have a serious problem in wiping off any of this judgment amount because the judgment and the verdict, of course, contained an element of willful intent because of the malice element of the defamation claim itself. So simply speaking, while this is not outright fraud and it's not as strong as some other kind of fraud, for example, fraud against fiduciary duty, it is just another exception under this code which prevents somebody from wiping off a judgment debt where there is a willful intent of malicious action or malicious tort, a wrong within the claim. And in this case, it was a defamation claim and there was actual malice, which of course satisfied the element of intent within the defamation. So in short, it's likely that this code is going to apply and therefore unlikely that she's going to be able to wipe away this judgment debt 
because of this exception to bankruptcy under this code. So broadly speaking, bankruptcy is there to protect individuals from certain debts that they incur. And they can even include certain judgments, even if the person has been negligent. So in the case of car accidents where someone has been driving badly and they've been held to be negligent to other road users and therefore they've incurred a judgment debt against them for injury to the other person, these can usually be written off with a bankruptcy. And in fact, most tort judgments, tort being a wrong judgment being an order of the court based on negligence, Negligence, very broadly speaking, where you have a duty of care to somebody else, you breach that duty of care and that results in someone else suffering harm, usually in the form of damages in an amount of money, and the court orders you to pay that amount of money to them, ordinarily you can wipe that off with bankruptcy. However, as I said earlier, there are some cases where you simply cannot wipe that away. And those are usually where there's an element of intent or dishonesty involved. So the next question is, what is the purpose of this bankruptcy in the first place? And it gives rise to a second question, what about the appeal? But I'll come back to that, so make sure you keep watching. So what's the purpose of the bankruptcy? Well, again, I think it's a strategy. A lot of these things within court legal procedures are just a strategy, and I think this is one of them. So what's the strategy? I think it's delay. A lot of strategy within litigation, including appeals between judgment and appeal, a lot of the strategy is for delay. Sometimes the strategy is to spend your opponent into submission and submission might just be giving up on the claim or giving up and settling for an amount of money, perhaps often less than they should deserve or by paying an amount of money when they feel like they shouldn't pay any at all. In this case, I think it's a tactic of delay. Why delay? Well, the bankruptcy might put some rules into play that will delay any payments that she might have to pay across for the judgment debt but then, of course, that gives rise to the next question about the appeal. Now, the appeal has a bond which, if she wants to fully follow through with the appeal, remember there are two bonds. The first was just the filing and the second being the suspension bond. So if she wants to follow through with the full appeal, she needs to put up the judgment amount with the interest. And I think this is going to be extremely difficult now that she's filed bankruptcy because the argument naturally will be, how can she put up the money for the suspension bond if indeed she has filed for bankruptcy to say that she can't pay the judgment debt? Because the two cannot both be true. If you cannot pay the judgment debt, and that's your basis for bankruptcy, if that is indeed the case, how can she then pay the appeal bond? Because it's the same amount plus the interest for the appeal bond. That, of course, doesn't rule out the possibility that somebody else might put up the appeal bond, but of course, this is all now into speculation. And of course, we're simply going to have to wait and find out what happens next. But as always, there are so many gems of information that come out of this case that we can talk about. Lots of these things, as I said, are procedural, are strategic. They raise lots of questions and there are discrete situations that different people find themselves in. And that's why, as we always say, you cannot rely on any of these videos as legal advice because they cannot possibly pertain to your exact situation. Imagine this whole situation in this trial as it's played out that's why it's so interesting for commentators such as myself to talk about this because there are so many things now in the public and in the open that were not there before that we can talk about, discuss with you and explain in some kind of detail. So I hope that's been interesting and enlightening. I'm sure there are questions from you because there are certainly still questions from me. But this is my initial reaction to the news that it seems that she's filed for bankruptcy and what I think that might mean. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please do like the video and subscribe. Hit the bell so you get notifications of new video. Hit me up at the website to join the mailing list and some exclusive offers on there. You can also join channel memberships because there's a whole catalogue of back live streams for many, many dozens of hours in the live stream catalogue if you join as a member on YouTube. In the meantime, thank you very much for your time and thank you for watching.